stand before God with my heart stained with sin and no peace within uncertain in paths that I tried then God found a way to reach down to me to save me from all of my sin though he's holy and just in his mercy I trust his love came to Calvary's tree. God went out on my own, far from the one who loves me, but he made a way, my sin debt to pay, his son came and love lifted me. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Lighthouse. Those that are here, those that are out there, those that might see us later uh, this week or later today. We hope you're having a good Sunday, wherever you are, or Monday, or whatever day it is. We just um, sang a song, Shine, Jesus, Shine, and I hope that we can shine forth the word today as we worship together. I hope you will find a blessing in that. So um, why don't we go ahead and sing our welcome song and get going. I need this sound. <clears throat> Francis, what would they call her? Sister Francis, or so, not sister, but oh, Miss Francis. Miss Francis uh, from Francis. from one of those Ding Dong School. Ding Dong School. <laughs> Hello, Susan. Hello. Mm -hmm. well, she, don't you remember the one with the magic thing? That was a romper room, but what was her name? I can't remember. Well, anyway, we greet you all, and uh, and we'll every anyone. Anyone that's online. I believe Christy is there and Kirsten, I think. Okay. Well, good to have you guys with us and uh, anyone who joins us later. And uh, so God is good. God is good. Yes, he is. Let us not grow weary in the work of love. Send the light. Send the light. Let us gather jewels for a crown above. Send the light. Send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Amen. And this is a time when we stop and we take prayer requests and praises, but first announcements, men's Bible study, Wednesday night. 
shoe sole, uh, getting ready for that. You know, and I was <laughs> okay. Uh, it was a good recovery here on my part. Anyway, uh, Wednesday night uh, here and online, and uh, and Thursday at 6 p.m. Ladies Bible reading and prayer. Is that correct? Okay, that correct. I got that. And then both Bible studies are meeting at the church and on Zoom. By faith, okay. we're coming to the church. This By faith, this week we are. And, trying, uh, yes. Yes. But anyway, um, that's not the way I use the word faith. But anyway, prayer requests uh, and prayer, <laughs> prayer, and uh, there's a lot of things to be praying for. Um, just, uh, just uh, Olga. People praying for my son Herman and my nephew Jaime. All right, why don't we go to prayer, and um, and we'll um, uh, pray for these things, and just putting them in the hands of the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you uh, that we have something that the world does not have. We can go right to the creator of the universe. We thank you and praise you for all you've done and all you're doing, and we pray this morning that... Um, um, that you would just uh, watch over and intervene in all these things that we've mentioned this morning. We thank you for, for Herman, and we pray that you continue to work in his heart and his life, and we thank you for the news uh, that this is only stage one. We pray that you would just give him peace, but most of all, turn his heart towards you, that he may know you and trust you. We pray for Olga's nephew, Jaime. We pray you'll work uh, also in his heart and his life, that he may know you and uh, trust you and we pray that you will just intervene and uh, uh, remove the cancer if it's thy will we pray Lord, for Stan we pray that you continue to work in him uh, we pray that uh, there'll be no problem with getting the stove fixed and no expense on his part and we pray for the uh, that you will heal his toe and heal and bring the blood pressure under control as well, uh, that he may continue to to keep on uh, doing the things he needs to do, including his work. We pray for his family's salvation for each and every one, Lord, and and uh, we pray for all of our families and for the needs that are there and the hardened hearts that are there. We pray that you would just. Uh, uh, change uh, exchange the hardened hearts uh, the stony hearts for those of flesh and we pray lord for for that thy name will be praised and glorified we pray that you'll heal broken relationships and and that you will just uh, uh cause each one to turn to you and know you we thank you for the things that you do and and for this uh family concert that's coming up with with uh sue's uh, grandchildren and, and uh, son-in-law and and we pray that thy name will be praised and glorified in all things we pray that each one will know you more and each one will, will draw closer to you and uh, continue to work in their hearts and lives we pray lord for uh a thank you for just the little things like the the fixed breaks and we we praise you for that as well and uh, we just thank you that you are a God that supplies needs even before we ask for them. Lord, we pray for Kirsten. We pray that you will uh, just uh, continue to work. We thank you uh, for her uh, new job, and we just pray that you will just supply the need uh, for the the, the uh, um, a new place to live, and uh, pray that you continue to watch over her and Cheyenne. And uh, we pray that each will grow in you and know you more. And we pray for Christy as she's looking uh, concerning this new job. And uh, thank you that she had the the uh, opportunity to to uh, uh, apply for it. And uh, we pray that you will uh, just give wisdom. And we pray that if it's thy will for her to have this, that you will have this. And if not, she'll have something even better. We thank you and praise you in all things. We pray for those that have been here and have not 
uh, been here for a long time. We pray for Katya and her mom, and we pray for Leon, and we pray for Lisa, and there's so many more, Lord. We just pray that you'll work in our, their hearts and their lives, and that you'll draw them closer to you, and if, if not here, then another uh, Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. We pray that thy name would be praised and glorified in all things. And we pray for Rose and that you continue to strengthen her and give wisdom concerning her medical needs and mental and emotional needs, everything else. We pray that you'll just strengthen her and bless her, Lord, and uh, uh, strengthen her spiritually as well. We pray for her sister, Nora, that you'll continue to work in her, touch her, heal her, strengthen her, help her to know your presence, Lord. We pray for Virginia. We pray that you'll continue to give her the strength she needs for each day. We pray that she'll draw closer to you and know you and know your presence and know you in her life, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. We thank you for Aunt Lily that she seems to be doing better at the nursing home. We pray that you continue to strengthen her and bless her and work in her to know your presence. We just thank you, Lord, that we can see you on the move in different places. And in our family, we thank you to see those things that you've been showing us that you are doing there. You're, you're doing above what we can even ask or think. And we pray that you'll continue to work in hearts and lives. We pray for Michaela as she goes uh, tomorrow to, to take her driver's test. And we pray that you would just uh, give her peace of mind as she does it and that she'll have... Uh, no difficulty, and that you'll pass it if it's thy will. We pray that you'll continue to supply needs, and we pray that you'll supply also the car after that, and we pray that thy name be praised and glorified in all things. We pray that you'll just bless us today in all that we do. We pray that you'll bless this offering and use that for your honor and glory as well, and continue to strengthen each of us and use us for your honor and glory. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next song is I Will Sing the One Verse Story. story of the cross died for me how he left his home and glory for the cross of Calvary yes I'll sing the wondrous story the Christ who died for me I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory gathered by the crystal sea. It's just not the computer, it's not in anything else. They still come over me, of the path I often tread, but the Savior still is with me by his hand, I'm more safely led. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing the saints in glory gathered by the crystal sea. He will keep me to the river rolls its waters at my feet then he'll bear me safely over where the loved ones I shall meet yes I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me sing it with the saints of glory 
glory gathered by the crystal sea. Okay. All right. We've been looking at uh, Psalms 139, and uh, um, Nancy's going to read uh, verses 19 through 24, which is the, uh, we're completing looking at that psalm today, and uh, doesn't mean we don't have to keep thinking about it, and uh, it's been a very precious thing. It was something that uh, uh, our granddaughter's best friend said that this was Alicia's favorite psalm and so uh, it drew me to look at it and it's such a message such a comfort when I think of of uh, the message that's in this psalm and so uh, um, we've covered uh, the first 18 verses and now we're going to cover from verses 19 through 24. Nancy? Psalm 139, verses 19 to 24. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God. O men of blood, depart from me. They speak against you with malicious intent. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with complete hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any grievous way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. The Lord, we do pray that you continue to watch over us this morning. I pray that as I speak, it won't be my words, uh, but I just pray that you'll uh, work within me, that it be your message for our church for today. And I pray that you'll continue to draw us closer to you, and uh, that we may... Uh, listen and hear what you have for us in Jesus' name. Amen. As I was saying earlier, this was a, a psalm which uh, uh, we were told that uh, uh, was our granddaughter's favorite psalm. And if anyone were to read this or hear this later on, uh, then those are already online and so forth. But if anyone does, I just will recap a little bit. Our, our granddaughter uh, went to be with the Lord uh, on uh, the day after Easter this year. And, uh, and it was something that really obviously um, disrupts our lives, definitely. And uh, it just uh, uh, changes everything all around for you. And uh, do, you, do you really... But it also challenges our faith and has challenged our faith that we really believe it. And uh, so um, uh, Alicia, though, had a lot of uh, things that she showed in her life that she did know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. And she was uh, um, uh, every day kept her uh, prayer journal and shared it with her friend. And uh, they... Uh, um, and, and the prayer journal itself has been quite a comfort to my, my daughter and her family as they've gone through some of the things and seen some of the things that Alicia had written down about her love for Jesus Christ. And so we've been looking uh, at Psalms 139, and it talks about the omnipresence of God. And, uh, and uh where he is and so and, and and we realize that yeah with the omnipresence of god where he is so is his love and so we've been looking at this psalm with the ideas that god knows me god is with me and god loves me and uh, the psalm itself does not mention the word love but i believe that's implied in it if god is watching over me then god loves me why is he watching over me? Because he loves me. And so we looked at different aspects of this, and we see that God knows me, and yet he still loves me. 
He knows what's all in my heart and my life and, and, and still he loves me. He knows everything. I, he sees everything I do and he still loves me. And he goes wherever I am and he watches over me. And then we are seeing this week, we're going to look at the fact that God's love provides us victory. God is watching over us and he provides the victory. And so the message of the Bible is God's love. And his love is shown in his acts, and especially in his acts to redeem sinful men. The Bible is all about the redemption of man. And why is the redemption of man? Because God loves us. And so in, uh, we have uh, uh, the fact that God loves us before we we're even born. And God gives us victory over sin. And so we all have enemies and uh, those that keep us back uh, or, uh, or try to keep us back from God's love. And uh, the, the point is, is that uh, sometimes our enemies are not necessarily other people, but they can be. Sometimes there are people that we count as friends and that we, and we ought to give a little more distance to because they end up influencing us and keeping us away from God. And so the point is, is that um, with most of us, though, uh, I think it's more often our circumstances become enemies to us unless we turn them over to, to our Lord. And so uh, we look at this this morning where he says, you would, oh, that you would slay the wicked. That's pretty uh, strong words. Um because uh, in verse 19, oh, oh, that you may would slay the wicked, O oh God. Now, we have to be careful here. It's not saying that God is going to slay all the wicked. Eventually, God's going to put an end to all things. And those that are wicked, those that have rejected God, will, will go to a separate place for eternity. And those that receive God will be with him forever in heaven. And so... Uh, here we though it's a little confusing because uh, doesn't the Bible say that God would not have any to perish? And uh, it's in, in Peter, uh, either first or second. I always get confused of which is which. But um, but then also uh, you know doesn't the Bible tell us we ought to pray for those who don't know God? And doesn't Jesus say to pray for our enemies? Psalms. 59.2 says, Deliver me from those who work evil and save me from the bloodthirsty men. And so I think what the psalmist is saying here, Lord, if I had my way, I would have you slay the wicked. Okay? And so we, we ought to be praying, Lord, take away these things that would keep me from serving you, whether they're people or things. Remove them from me and then verse uh, 19 also goes on and says directed to the men of blood the wicked depart from me Psalms 119 115 depart from me you evildoers that I may keep the commandments of my God while God does not always destroy the wicked we pray that that we will not fall into their attempts to keep us from serving God and so that's what we look at, but we live in a society that says anything goes, and as as Christians, uh, we don't uh, always break from those who are doing wrong. We even welcome them. I think of the fact we even welcome them into our our, our uh, living rooms every night as we watch TV. We're welcoming the ungodly into our homes. Now, I'm not one who says. Every Christian should turn off the TV all the time, although it wouldn't hurt. Uh, but uh, but we need to be very careful as to what we do. What are we watching? Uh, and the point is, is that we're getting a lot of the world's influence by the different things we watch or listen to. And, uh, and the world is saying that, you know... Um, that it's wrong to pass judgment on people who do, and they name different things, and uh, um, and so on the other hand, um, you know, Bible clearly tells us there are things that are wrong, and and we need to stay away from those things. 
And so the psalmist says, for evil people to leave him alone. But do we seek to make that break? Do we really realize there are those that are influencing us that we need to make a break from? It's one thing to want to be liked by everybody, but it's another thing to hold fast for the gospel of Christ, to be tough enough to do so. They, they speak against God, is what uh, the psalmist says. And they speak against you with malicious intent, and your enemies take your name in vain. They pretend that God is not there. Jude 1.15 to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly men among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. And it's talking about there's going to be a time of judgment, that that is what is exactly going to happen when God is going to uh, uh, judge them for the things that they have done and are doing. Whenever I think in this vein, I think of the verse in uh, Romans one twenty one: when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, and neither were they thankful. And so we see that sometimes the unbeliever's uh, opposition is very subtle. And uh, as I mentioned before, you have those who say, you have your faith and I'll have mine, you know, or, or whatever. And if your faith helps you, that's fine. But when... Uh, push comes to shove, we realize that there is a subtle opposition there. And we need to see that there are two kinds of people in this world. There are the saved and the unsaved. That's that. Either those who are, are following after God or those who are not. And those who are in favor of the gospel and those who are the enemies of the gospel. There's no middle ground. And then verses 21 and 22. He says, do not, not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee, and am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with complete hatred. I hate, I count them mine enemies. And I think there we see uh, the encouragement that we need to be looking at and realizing where our enemies truly lie. Now, I'm not going around and saying we need to hate everybody and treat them badly or anything like that. But we need to realize, we need to realize that, uh, and we need to draw a line so that we are not allowing their influence influence us. Okay? And uh, uh, so the they society would call the, our, our uh, psalmist narrow-minded, intolerant. But we are to recognize those that are the enemies to our faith, that they are, okay? And not to cozy up to them, not to seek their favor, as many do in the compromising church. We have so many positions that have been taken in the compromising church that uh, it's okay to have gay and homosexuals and so forth in, in the pulpit. That's compromise. That's more than compromise. That's caving in. And the problem is, is that we are not to do that. Uh, we need to realize who the enemies are. In other words, what I'm saying here, we need to know our enemies. And, uh, and so uh, Psalms 26.5, I hate the assembly of evildoers. And the conclusion is, I will not sit with the wicked. Okay? Now, I'm not saying you go around, uh, you know, treating people poorly but i'm saying this don't sit in with the things that they do that are wrong don't allow that to be an influence recognize them as what they are they're enemies to your faith and so then he says search me search me oh god and know my heart try me and know my thoughts okay so search me psalms 26 to first part of it, examine me, O Lord. And so that is such a brave thing to ask. Lord, show me, show me. You know, 
if we are just left to ourselves, we'll go in there and we'll go in there with a wrecking ball or a, a steamroller and we'll just make a wreck of our, our hearts and, and, and come out with extreme guilt and hopelessness. But he's saying that, that God, you do this. Because you see, God does it with a surgical instrument with the sword that's sharper, with the word of God, which is sharper than any two-edged sword, like, like a surgical instrument, he goes in and he uh, can, can cut out the things that are necessary and not the things that are not. And so, search me, Lord. And, um, and, and, and it opens us to 1 John 1, 9, which, so we can confess and he's faithful to forgive and to cleanse. And so, uh, and so in context here, search me, Lord, how much have I compromised? How much have I given to the way of the wicked? How much have I gone the same way as they have? And so where have I accepted the ways of the world? And I need the Holy Spirit to show me this. And then he goes on and he says, try me. That's another brave thing to say. Try me. What that means is to test me, and the and the idea is is like gold is refined, okay, and is put through the blast furnace or a furnace of some sort that that melts it and 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 uh, gets rid of the impurities, and this is what he's saying here. Try me. Get rid of the impurities within me. Psalms twenty six b. We quoted the first part of it. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins in my heart. Prove me. Uh, purify me. And that is not always, always uh, pleasant for us on our end. And we and our family are going through a time definitely of a proving time. And, uh, and we're not the only ones here. And God is putting us through different things. And he's proving, where's your faith? You know, even with the problems that we're having, he's saying, do you still trust me? So you still trust me? Do you really trust me? You say you do? And and so uh, he, he's telling us, prove me, uh, purify my, my faith. And then see if there be wicked ways in me. King James says wicked, and uh, our translation here said grievous way. Uh, I like the, the term grievous because it's something that grieves God. Is there anything that grieves you in me, Lord? Show me this and uh, cleanse me from these things. Psalms 119, oh, 19, rather 12, who can discern his own errors? Cleanse me from my hidden faults. I need to, I have to come in and cleanse me from these things. And so we pray for the working of the Holy Spirit to reveal what needs to be addressed, not our own searching, for that can be destructive. And so we know that God forgives and cleanses. But the whole point is we need to be willing. We need to be willing. And then he concludes with lead me. Lead me, O Lord. Lead me in the way everlasting. Lead me, Lord. Psalms 5, 8. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of mine enemies. Make straight your way before me. I mean, God leads us when we are willing to follow. Um, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And that word trust me, there means, means lay yourself prostrate at his feet commit yourself submit yourself completely over into his hands trust in the lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding and all thy way acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path so god's love leads us to victory and uh, even those uh uh even, even when the the way seems so dark God who knows us and loves us will carry us through. And so I finish with this. O oh Lord, you have searched me 
you have known me. Now lead me in the way of right, uh, the way everlasting. This psalm started out by saying, Search me, O Lord. You have searched me and known me. So, Lord, you have searched me and known me. Now lead me in the way everlasting. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you've shown us in your word. And we pray that we will continue to grow in you and mature in you and be the servants you would have us to be. And we pray for this little church that you'll continue to work here and draw more to fellowship those who have come and aren't going anywhere that they will return we pray that thy name be praised and honored and glorified in all these things in jesus name amen so we, we look at and remember what god Jesus Christ did on the cross, and that's what it's all about. And uh, this is such a, when you think of this, and, oh, communion is basically a, a love story. It's what God did for us on the cross. And, uh, and so uh, Paul reminds us to, when we come together, you know, we take the bread and we take the the uh, grape juice that it is remembrance of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us and not only what he did for us as Paul said I have been crucified with Christ so what happened to us on the cross as well I've been crucified with Christ yet not I and if we would really take hold of, of that simple truth, I think it would really impact our lives and change so much of what we do in our daily lives. I've been crucified with Christ, yet I live. Old things have passed away, and all things have become new. And I just got more grape juice on my <laughs> Bible there. It, uh, and so what Paul said I've received it the Lord of the Lord which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he brake it and said take ye this is my body which is broken for you and so let's pray our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. We praise you for what you've done and what you are doing in hearts and in lives. We pray that you'll supply every need that we have. But we thank you most of all, Lord Jesus, for your body, which was broken for us, which was shed on the cross, so that we could have life and have it everlasting. We thank you and praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. said take eat this do in remembrance of me
And likewise, after the same manner, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as ye all drink it in remembrance of me. Dan, would you ask God's blessing on the cup? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings you give us each and every day, for watching over us and caring for us. We ask that you bless us as we drink of, of this juice and, and help us to remember that you shed for us for, so that we could be with you in glory. And we thank you and praise you. Amen. Amen. So it said, drink this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show or demonstrate the Lord's death till he come. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for what Jesus did on the cross for us. We pray that we'll live it in our lives, the transforming power of the cross. We've been crucified with Christ, yet we live. I pray that we will live in your spirit, with your spirit within us. In Jesus' name, amen. last song Praise the one who set me free.
of eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Be blessed and be a blessing today. Thanks for coming. Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo!